Da, ale... Good evening, everyone. Oh, it is on loop. Ah, uh, from <laughs> leftovers from our time last week. <laughs> the music was on loop. We had that uh, underneath our our uh, after dark episode. Um, still haven't recovered from that quite. Um, anyways, it was, it was a fun time last week. Anyways, welcome. It is it is Wednesday night. Uh, we are here for Minor League Fights and Insights. We are. This is episode six. Six already. We're in week uh, coming up to week five. We are halfway through the regular season. It's hard to believe. Um, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs. You know, hopes and dreams uh, sometimes uh, smashed on the floor. The 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 field left on the field. Um, sweat and tears and blood. Um, but in in general, it's been a really fun uh, month of, of football so far. Looking forward to another month, all leading up to the big championship week and uh, the big draft. Um, so yeah, uh, so I'm here. I'm not alone here right now. I'm, I'm the only one on screen, but there are many, uh, joining me, uh, tonight as always, Daniel Wright, um, <clears throat> my right hand man, uh, coming in here. Uh, how are you tonight? Well, besides being very tired, like I normally am, I feel like that's a way of life now with college. <laughs> uh, I've been feeling pretty good though. I mean, I think I was three and one on guesses last week on how the game went. I see Mother Grizzly's in the house, so I'm sure she's very happy of what happened last week as well. Awesome, good to have you here, Robert Cherry, joining us from from the the state of Florida. How are you tonight? I'm doing really well, uh, preparing for the hurricane, but doing well. Good. Your video is frozen. I'm just going to update that quick, and then we also have while I'm doing that, Switch Thumper in the house. How are you tonight, sir? Doing great. Good glad to, to glad to be here, man. Good to hear. Uh let me just update Robert's uh That's a good profile stream. pic right there. There you go. The nice and <laughs> you're emanating masculinity. <laughs> it's cool. Um the slight or, look away just makes it too. Just that, like the, the college or the uh, the high school senior photo or something like that. So cool. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, a great panel here uh, assembled, um, but beyond that, we've also got some really great um, other guests joining us. Uh, before we get to our, our second uh, guest, uh, right now we have a special interview uh, with uh, a minor league player. We've got on the line with us, we've got Kim, King Jackson, who is the quarterback for the Tacoma Grizzlies. Good evening, King. How are you tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The quarterback for the Tacoma Grizzlies, man. I'm good. <laughs> you doing good? Doing good? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. I'm doing wonderful. Good to hear. Good to hear. So tell us a little bit about who is King Jackson, whether that's the person, the, the player out there on the field, or who's the person behind the player? Well, the person behind the player, you know what I'm saying? I'm just a, I'm just, a, well, I'm a girl dad first. You feel me? I got two daughters that just started preschool this year. But I'm also a young father, though, because I had my first kid when I graduated. Like, when I was graduating high school in the 12th grade, my uh, fiance well, she's now my fiance. She was seven months pregnant. So, you know, I had to grow up quick, you know, <laughs> yeah. out of high school. So I had to become a man early, you know. And I had, you know, I grew up in a single-parent household. Me and my brother raised by our mother, you know. She did everything on her own, but she did a very good job, you know. I feel like, and she, well, she feels like me and my brother are pretty decent people. So, you know, she feel like she did a good job. And mm -hmm. what, if you if you got your mom approval of how you know, if she feel like you're living pretty decent, I mean, you're doing something right. Absolutely. So best for you. Absolutely. That is awesome to hear. Nice to, great to, to hear some of the story behind, behind who you are. That's awesome. I'm curious, what has your SFLM journey been like so far for you? Um, when did you join? What has it been like? Well, actually it, I joined, like I say like a year ago, actually. Okay. And I made a receipt. I wanted to be a quarterback, but I ended up, I ended up having to make a receiver because don't, the quarterback and running back position fills up real fast. So <laughs> yep. you really got to be quick on it, you know. So I ended up having to make a receiver, which is not a bad position. It's really 
a cool position to play or whatever, but I wasn't really just that into making a receiver. So I really didn't like progress them after like the second week. So they kind of like <clears throat> put me off of the team. I was on the Rattlers actually. Okay. Yeah. And a funny story, he might not remember, but it's a dude named like the franchise blue or something. He's a receiver as well. And mm -hmm. we had like a, a little back and forth because I had put the franchise in my name. So it's just a fun story that I remember <laughs> from my previous season or whatever. But I'm still a rookie, I feel like, because I never <laughs> uh, I never played a game or whatever, you know. So I still feel like a first-year player, honestly. Definitely. I get that totally. Um, that, that's awesome to hear that, that you know, it wasn't the, the right role for you, the right position for you. And sort of, again, I can totally understand that, that, you know, sort of uh, – the fun of it isn't quite there, the the investment or interest in it. Um, but I'm I'm glad you came back and I'm glad you you snapped on that that quarterback position when it came up. Um, yeah, man. You know, I'm a I feel like I'm a quarterback at heart, you know. Cause like actually like when I'm playing when I'm gaming and stuff, like it's a it's like this Madden it's a game or whatever I be playing and it's a it, you feel me and I play quarterback in there so like I've always, and even when I played Little League football in ninth grade and middle school football, I always played quarterback. You know? So that's just the position that I always <laughs> been in. So yeah, sort of gravitate. You, you're the, you're the quarterback, no matter what. Even if you, when you were the running back, you were a quarterback at heart still. Back, back, yeah, back, cool, exactly. Um, curious on what is one of your favorite moments so far for you during your journey so far. I honestly have a lot of them. honestly like throwing the throwing my first touchdown. Mm -hmm. That my my first play on the field, like watching the the first time I even just got to visually like see my player like in his <laughs> uniform, like during the pre games, like during the prayer circle, and not, like that. Them are like great moments, but the my favorites. It honestly has to be like my all time favorite has to be I'll say week three. Like going into the game, we was on two, but everybody on the team was like we were still on the ups with our like moral with our with the moral of the team and like mm -hmm. how we was feeling like, you know what I'm saying? So going into the week it was like, you know, everybody was feeling good, but when we got that first win, and like when we lose, when we lose, like the first week we lost, I actually like felt it. Like I really felt <laughs> like I was on the field, and it really hurt my feelings that we lost. Like, <laughs> I was, I was real, I was sad in real life. Like, once, once that moment hit, I realized like how I really felt, even though it's a virtual sim league. But when we got in there and we won, like I said how happy my team was, like, the joy, like, the pure joy, like, everybody, like, everybody was, like, it, it's, like, it, words can't even explain the moment. Like, it was, like, all the first win and how happy everybody was for each other. Like, nobody was really, like, pointing out what we did in the video. We was more happy and pointing out what everybody else did, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Everybody was like genuinely like proud and happy that we were able to accomplish that first win. I mean, it was no, it, I haven't had a feeling quite like that first win that I was actually able to capture in the SFL. So that's yeah. got to be my favorite moment. It sounds like a team win. There's nothing, there's nothing better than that. No, like everybody played a role in it. And like it was something that, you know, as you were saying, like, even though you might have started off uh, defeated, you know, a uh, uh, winless, you know, for the first two weeks, you were playing like an undefeated team. You had that heart of that undefeated team. Uh, that's awesome to hear. Yeah, man. Now we're like, we went from being the bottom team to being the fourth team. So now we're in the playoff race, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it does. it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish And right now. Right, it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a race. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. It, we started off slow, but now we're starting to get our groove. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and one reason is like because I don't. I think it was week one or week two, 
And we was down by like two or three points. We was down by like four. And we had drove all the way up the field. And I threw an interception to lose the game. And that really like broke my heart. I was like, I really let the team. Like I, I felt like I threw the interception. And mm-hmm. it really hurt. But I went to the channel. I was like, that's me. Like, that's on me. And nobody on the team blamed me. Like, everybody on the team was like, no, it's okay. It's a team win, team game. Then, you know, like, even the GM, like, she gave me encouraging words. Like, like, it, like them losses really made us come closer as a team. Like, we're, we're a real fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, I totally do. I totally do. I So, my first two seasons were on – uh we didn't, we did not finish above 500 for the, for the, the season. So I'm, it's not something I'm not familiar with. So I, it, it's interesting at how, like, you know, the, the troubles, the, the uh, challenges, how, how that can bring a team together. Definitely. They really do. I'm curious on uh, what are you hoping now we're at, we're about halfway. We are officially halfway through the season. What are your, your, what are you hoping to accomplish with the, the Tacoma uh, Grizzlies? You know, are you, are you full on focused on that, that championship? Well, honestly, honestly, but when I first made my player, my goal was honestly to like put up big numbers and well, my goal was always to win a championship because <laughs> you know that's what you want to do. But my goal was honestly to like put up big numbers and like you know make a big splash with stats. But now, like going through the season and going through the motions, like my honest big my honest main goal is to just win the championship. Like right now, I, I don't have a three touchdown on on the season or whatever. Like honestly, I don't even really even too much care if I throw another touchdown the whole season because my honest goal is to just win you know like put my team in the best position to win you know because mm-hmm. since I'm the quarterback I feel like I'm somewhat the leader of the team so I gotta portray myself as the leader not even portray myself I have to be the leader you know what I'm saying you gotta be that guy on the yeah. field so it's like my main goal is to honestly win the championship. Like last week, JB ran for 200 yards and I only threw 100 yards and I didn't even throw a touchdown. And he ran for 200 yards and we got to win. Honestly, I honestly didn't even think about the stats. I was honestly just happy about getting the win. So my ultimate goal is to just win a championship for them, for my team. It's not even to win a championship for me, it's to win a championship for my team. Because in the minors, the championship in the minor league, it means something while you're in the minors, but it won't really mean anything in the main. It's like winning a championship in college. It mm-hmm. means something, but once you get to the pros, it don't mean them. But the relationship and the love that me and my teammates have for each other, even though it really won't matter in the majors, like, it's still going to mean something to us that we're able to come together as a squad and go through all the trials and tribulations we went through and to actually in to actually, when we get to the end of the race, holding that trophy up. And yeah. I don't think nothing's going to beat that. Honestly. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's always that, that transformation from the me it's all about me to it's all about we it's it's now you're part of that team you know and it's like yeah i'll you'll come hell or high water i am i am doing what i can for for the we you know get that win that w that's awesome for the w the 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 getting the stats and all that is cool but getting the win means even more like i had to i had to almost learn that being a quarterback isn't about just putting up stats. It's about getting the win. Like it, mm-hmm. like you can put up great stats and be Dan Marino, or like you could be like my goat, my favorite player, Tom Brady. Who he really only led the league in passing like once or twice in his whole career for real, maybe three times or so. But he's known for winning. Payne Manny put up all the stats, but Tom Brady always beat him in the end. So that's why. You feel me? It's more about the win than the numbers. Definitely, people will remember the the, the record, the win, 
unless the stats totally. Right. Uh, so and curious. He, I hadn't learned it. Tell me about uh, if you had to imagine your ideal professional SFL team, uh, pro team. W- tell me about like what are some of the traits that that uh, you imagine that that pro team would have, the one that you would like to go to. Well, my the my ideal team would have to be un- honestly, honestly, my ideal team is a team is a team that like I kind of like going to teams that are rebuilding like I uh, like anybody can go to a team that's already ready made or already a playoff contender or already a championship contender and just be another guy you know what I'm saying but it's so it means more in my opinion when you go to a team that is grinding, you know what I'm saying? Because you can come in, and when you come into a team that is grinding, that is in a a new place, trying to find themselves. It, it's like the brotherhood that you will build with your guys will be way stronger because y'all went through the struggle together. You know what I'm saying? Y'all went through the struggle together for like a year or two, and then boom, you break through. And it's going to mean more to you and your guys and the team because y'all started from the bottom and now y'all here, you feel me? So, mm-hmm. honestly, the team, the, my ideal team would – I really honestly don't have an ideal team. Like, I just want to go to a team that has potential. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I wouldn't – I don't mind going to the, to the worst team in the league or the best team in the league. I just want to go to a team that – I could build good relationships with that's past the football field, that's outside the lines. Like some, like a team that you can come to and talk about your real personal life with. Like you could actually have like build like a brotherhood with certain players. Like on Tacoma, like I feel like we all we we have like a strong brotherhood. But I feel like me and like Rob, like I feel like we got like a special connection. You know what I'm saying? Like we we click so well together and it also works in our favor that he's a receiver and I'm a quarterback, but like it goes past it. Like we're two totally different people, but you see what I'm saying? Like it mm-hmm. mix, like we we count we come together, we mix well. So like my ideal team is a team that I can grow with, that I can build with that I can, you know what I'm saying, grow that brotherhood, like, feel like we're one. Like, yeah. one team, one mind, one soul, one heartbeat. That's awesome to hear. I, You know, it, there's that's awesome that you have such a broad um, vision of, of a team that you could fit into. And if, you know, it's and it's not about the, you know, play on the field or or championship. It's, it's about, you know, a team that could use you however best that they can use you and, and, you know, uh, a, a locker room that, that you're able to help participate in and, and help lead when you need to lead and support. Right. Correct. Like you, you, you get what I'm saying, man. I do. Totally. Like, I've never been a man of too many words. So I always been like, not like, I always been like social, but I've never like been able to like, truly express myself like through my words so like being able to come on this podcast and being able to express myself like in my virtual life and (laughs) somewhat of my real life to you guys you know it was kind of like it was kind of like a counseling session a little bit you know what I'm saying (laughs) that's great I I love that you know I that's what this is all about is, you know, shedding, shedding a little bit of, you know, our, our walls that we put up for some reason, you know, with some people we meet every day, but be able to, you know, be honest and be true, be ourselves and be accepted for whoever we are, whatever we are, uh, whatever we bring to the table. So being valued. Right. Cause where I come from, where I come from, people don't be involved in like virtual like like assembly like if i was to tell like my brother or like my friends like 
man, I'm a quarterback for this sim. They'll be like, what's the sim league? <laughs> and then I'll be like, I'll be like, it's weird. I'll be like, I'll explain them to what it was. And I'll be like, yeah, it's on this game called All Pro Football 2K8, which I've been known about since I was a kid. Like, when the game came out, my cousin them had it, so I used to play it. Mm-hmm. But they would be like, my brother would be like, what is that? 2K got football game? Like, for it would be funny. Like, I just know it was so it – like I, I could. It's like, uh, you know what I'm saying. Like I have my real life friends, and then I come over here, and you know what I'm saying. I have my teammates and stuff. So it's like I got like two sides to the world. That's awesome. Cool. Uh, Daniel, do you have any questions for King? Yes, yeah, sir. Like King, we spoke. You spoke about this a little bit before we got on screen about uh, how you started 0 and 2, and then motivation kicked in, and you guys got motivated. Now you guys are 2 and 2, which is fabulous. Craig, guys, license on that. While owners are here, while they're talking, I like to give the floor to you. So talk about you guys being 0-2 and, and how you guys uh, worked in the locker room, motivated each other, and look where you're to now. Let's just see some of that locker room fun, how you talked about it, how you guys grow some more as a team. Well, week one, week one when we took that loss, and it was like we were so excited. You know, like when you be like on a super high, and you get disappointed and it just like crushes you. But it don't like crush you to a point to where you want to give up. It kind of like made us be hungry for that win the next week. And then when we went into the next week and we took another close L, cause like I said, we're two plays away from being four and oh. And that's something we don't try to harp on the losses because we always try to move forward. But one thing that I always say, like, we're two plays away from being 4-0. And, oh, and it's not to say, oh, we should we should feel sorry for ourselves, but it's more of, like, to motivate us. Like, we honestly are, like, we feel like we're the best. Like, no slight to any team because there's a lot of good teams in the league, like the flight, Madison, of course. Like, even and Annapolis, that's a, every – I feel like all the teams in the minors are, like, neck and neck, but – we really honestly in Tacoma feel like we have a chance to beat any team in the league. Even when we was 0-2, we felt like we could go out there and challenge a, a major league team, even though we can't, you know, that's just the confidence we have in our guys, you know what I'm saying? So even though we was 0-2, we never lost that confidence. And we always keep it light, you know, always have jokes. And uh, one thing that really brought us together was when Rob, like, when Rob's father, he, you know, he came down and got a little ill or whatever, and we didn't get, like, when he got ill or whatever, it was, like, week three, so it was, like, our first win, and we wanted to get that win from Rob. We didn't even want to win for ourselves. We wanted to get that win from Rob and Papa Hunt, you feel me? So, like, we just, we just was able to, never lose sight of the main goal. And we was able to never lose that confidence. We was always able to just hold each other accountable and make sure we lock in with our progressions. And like with me, one thing that I did was I I started scouting the, the other teams, but I ain't trying to give out too many secrets or whatever. But, you know, I, I actually got to first and I was in communicate with Jay Wells, you know, the, the head coach. And I would cut, I would communicate with him and stuff. So, like, I feel like after the two losses, we actually locked in more, like, I actually communicated with my coaches. We actually, like, had a report on, like, the game plan. Like, I feel like it made us, it made us a stronger team. And we all, and since we have only three two-way players on the defense. So, like, it's like we grew and we got better and better as the weeks, as the weeks went on. And we we noticed that with the field on the play, and that's how I was able to be on this two-game win streak. I'm going to knock on wood because I don't want to jinx it because, you know, <laughs> trying to get this W tomorrow on, this, on Thursday, not Friday, because you feel me, on Thursday. So, yeah. Mm. That's awesome. We was able to just keep our confidence. I that I just say we was able to keep our confidence, you know. Long story short. Cool. Uh Robert, do you have any questions uh for for King tonight? 
Uh, you kind of touched on this, but uh, if you chose a play you could have back, which play would it be? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the INT. I don't know when I was thinking, because I literally screenshotted the play. Like, I did different little screenshots of the play, and I, and I looked at the play, and I'm like, why would I throw the ball? Like, it's not even me throwing the lob pass to Rob. Because, you know, Rob is 6'6", 240. So, it's not bad throwing him. But, like, why would I wait until after he gets to the back of the end zone and turns around? And then I throw the ball. So, I pretty much threw it right to the defender. Like, And then, if I would have threw it quick, if I would throw a quick pass, he would have caught it and got an end zone because the defender was playing back. He would he was really pretty much standing still in the end zone. So Raw really could have did like I was saying it was gonna be like an out route or like a quick pass. But then while Rob did that, I had JB Elliott coming out the backfield, running a swing route right up under Raw, and the linebacker was blitzing. So it really was no it was no linebacker guarding JB. So I could have pitched it to him. He could have ran in the end zone. So there's two things right there that I noticed that I could have did differently. And then I feel like I could have threw a slam route. I could have even ran the ball in or something. But like, <laughs> I feel like everything that I should have done and all them options I had on that field, I chose the absolute worst one. And it cost my team the win. Like, I threw the interception to lose the game. After And then what made it so bad, the defense literally got a stop for us. And we worked so hard to drive up the field. And everything was going so good, like throwing dots, JB doing his job, the line blocking. We're not getting sacked. We're not dropping no balls. Even, even number 19, who... I don't even know if he's a real person or not, but he dropped a pass in the game, and I was like, I'm going to come back to you. And in that on that last drive, he caught a big first down. Like, everybody was doing their job, and I feel like I let us down. And it, it, it hurts to let your team down, especially when you're the guy on the center. But the way my team came around and was able to pick me up and – Help me like move on past that. Like you feel me? Like it, 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 it was a horrible play. But then again, I feel like it was one of them. It was one thing that needed to happen to show how much love and trust your team have in you. Because I was, I can't believe I threw the pick and stuff, and that was like, it's all right, King. You just gotta move on to the next play. You feel me? That was like. Then my my GM Nakai was like, "It's all right, King. You'll throw plenty more. It's okay. Like we we trust you. Like we we haven't lost like an inch of confidence in you." So that play was like a blessing. Take it back, but I do take it back because we would be three and one right now if I didn't do it. <laughs> you know? and then, yeah. And then uh, for a final question, Switch, do you have a question for King Jackson tonight? Yeah, uh, I want to ask King, what do you think are going to be the uh, key points of attack to win tomorrow night and then continuing down the season for you guys? Well, I don't want to just give you the sauce, you know what I'm saying, how we trying to <laughs> attack you, you feel But like, like I say, I feel like the keys to the win, Tacoma, we are kind of like, we're like, I would say like the feel it, like how the Eagles are in today's game, like how they're winning and how the Patriots used to win back in the day with Teddy Bruschi and Rodney Harrison and Kyle Long. And Son- See, I'm a real Patriots fan. I'm only 25, <laughs> but I know the real pay Like I, I've been a Patriots fan since back way when I was legit. You see what I'm saying? So I feel like the key to our success is really – is like it's always been. We play great defense. We control the clocks. We make big plays when we need to make the big plays. And you see, you know, 
I feel like defense is the key to our success. But at the same time, with the offense that we have with JB and me at quarterback, with Z Lee, with Raw, then we got Bob Long, we got a good O line. Like, I honestly feel like as long as we go out there and play Tacoma football, no one can beat us. We can only, I feel like we can only beat ourselves. We want the only game we want to play beat ourselves. So I feel like if we go out there and play how we're supposed to play, we're going we to come out with the win. Because who thought we was going to be off? I seen them pick us. Everybody picked us to be the underdog, and we came out with it. So, you know, we just got to play Tacoma football. And, and you know, we're going to come out. As long as we do what we got to do, we won't lose. But as long as we do what we got to do and play how we play, we'll, we'll ride that ship to the championship <laughs> at the end of the journey. Cool. Well, good luck tomorrow night. That's re- it is you know twenty four hours away, uh, less than that I think. Um, so good luck. Thank thank you, King, for for coming on uh, tonight. Really appreciate it. I got a I no problem. I really appreciate y'all for having me. But I got a question for my boy Switch though. <laughs> sure. What's up? My question is, so what what I what what you predict the score going to be for tomorrow game? Between Madison and Tacoma, in your uh, in your in your humble opinion, and my I think it's gonna be a really close game. I think it's gonna uh, end up being a. Uh, it could easily come down to a field goal. I I could see a a twenty seven twenty four either way, but I got Madison on top. You got Madison on top, babe. Crazy. Yeah, that's the most humble I can be. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. I love like it. it. Yes, sir. Tomorrow night, man. Tomorrow night. I'll Win or lose, you can come out to the club with us. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, and you know what? Coming back next week just to talk about the game. Win or lose. Of course. Cool. Hey, man. Good yeah. luck. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys, man. Thank you. Good luck. Have a good one. All right. So that brings us to. Great guy. That was, you know, I always love talking to, to minor league players, getting the, the you know, the essence of who they are, who they are behind the player. Uh, that is awesome. Um, we have another guest uh, tonight with us. Uh, do we need to have this guest? I got a bone to pick with this guy. <laughs> Uh-oh. We'll have a grind my gears thing right here, right now, if we need to. <laughs> really? Okay. Oh, um, yeah. Bring him on, because we'll have a real talk. Okay, <laughs> so we have tonight, um, I guess we've got Doug Day uh, with us tonight. Um, he is overall SFLM advocate, uh, lovely. You know, you help so many players with progression questions and other things. And you're new, the newly uh, minted uh, Seattle GM over there for the Seattle Nemesis. Uh, good evening, Doug. How are you tonight? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Doing well, doing well. So, oh, Doug, you don't walk around with my gears. Uh, take my brother and convert him to a Twinkie lover. That's what my, grounds my gears. <laughs> oh, I was wondering what this was going to be. One Twinkie at a time. <laughs> or Banksy will never be the same. <laughs> I know what to get him for Christmas now. There you go. Perfect. I think he got nemesis, two boxes in his contract. closet ready to go. He got two boxes of Twinkies in his closet ready to go. Nice. <laughs> and I don't see any uh, Twinkie apparel or Twinkie things around you. You have completely made the the conversion to Seattle Nemesis. I, are you? Uh, the only thing you're lacking is the the big cloak that I think Ethan was making for the for the conference. Yeah, we'll let Ethan have that one. Cool, cool. Um, so we we want to have you on because you are you, your, your mind, your head is a wealth of information. Um, and, you know, want to pick your brain a little bit about some things and get your take on, on how things have been going this season for, for the minor league, for the players um, and, and get some tips, some advice from you uh, and maybe a little sneak peek of like, what is, what are GM, what is the GM role? Like, what are they, as they lead up to the draft, um, what do GMs tend to look for? How do you, should I be nervous about reaching out to GMs? Um, should I let GMs come to me versus being proactive, reaching out? So a little bit of a little thing. So let's see. Um, let's talk about progressions uh, in general. Like 
do you have any tips, any things, anything that you would recommend from uh, for the minor league players as they do progressions, as they're, you know, trying to build up their players? Um, the progressions are kind of tough because some, some minor league teams, I mean, progressions are progressions and the attributes and all that stuff has always been, you know, somebody thinks this is better. Somebody thinks this is better. Um, when I first joined, actually let's back up when the SFLM first came in, um, we were in San Jose and we were like, what is going on? What is happening? <clears throat> so we're trying to progress these guys and every single one of our wide receivers is like speed, speed every week, speed. I'm like, okay, you can run fast, but you can't catch crap because they're not working on their catch not working on their run route it's just all speed so these guys are like flying down the field doinking off their helmets and <laughs> doinking off their hands so that was my first that was my first like aha moment you know so a lot of you may not know this a lot of you do but my wife now plays in Seattle she's she was a Tacoma Grizzly. We were working on her build, and we just started with catch and run route. And if you paid attention to the minor leagues when she was there, you saw what she did. But like defense, you know, there's certain things that I focus on with my linebackers. T.J. Harper, you beast. Did you guys see T.J. Harper chase down Sean? That's some I, I, run coverage. That's some run coverage right there. <laughs> but there are certain like defensive line. You got to have this. You got to start out with this. And with the minor league guys, it's really hard because you really only have, you know, like if somebody joins now, you only have like four progressions. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, what do you focus on right away that will get these guys drafted? So we work on what we work on, but the other part to the progressions is you have to be attractive to the owners and the GMs. You know, you have to start out, get your build going, um, talk to your, your minor league coaches. Um, a lot of the minor league coaches are really good at the builds, really good at that stuff. So, you know, work on that. Um, the the biggest part though like you said do i sit back and wait for a gm to get a hold of me or do i reach out to them my suggestion would be reach out to them say hey i'm here i'm active i'm ready to go you know the with me joining the nemesis as a, as a gm it was like aha moment number two, because before I was a GM, I was just like, okay, what am I going to do with my player? You know, what's my player going to do now that I'm a GM? It's like, Oh crap. I got like 22, you know, 23 other guys. How are we going to get these guys going? How are we going to get this? How are we going to get that? I'm paying way more attention. I mean, I've done it before, but I've mm -hmm. paid way more attention to the FL SFLM. And these guys are just amazing. This draft is going to be, this draft is going to be incredible because I don't think that you can not get a great player. I mean, whoever scores King Jackson, there you go. Um, the other part too, with the, with the, uh, what GMs might be looking at. Reach out. If you're a minor league guy, reach out and say, Hey, I want to learn how to scout. I want to learn how to coach. Show me what I need to do. Because back when I started, it was, you know, okay, we'll take you and we'll put you here. Nowadays, there's so many players that are coming in 
you need to stand out. You need to have that build ready. You need to have that attitude because if I'm in gen chat or if I'm in SFLM chat and I see some of the stuff that I've seen over the last week, there's a couple of guys I don't think I would draft. Now we get the exuberance, we get the excitement. Keep it fun. You go personal, you go at somebody, that's kind of a turnoff to me. So mm-hmm. I don't know. Robert, sorry, you have, sorry oh. for the long windedness. No, I, I like it. I like it. Robert, do you have any questions? Uh, any question or any thoughts of, of anything for uh, Doug? Uh, I do have a question. What do you think the cap will be? If the cap goes up, um, I think it's probably maybe 25, 30, possibly. Awesome. Um, we did. Uh, they changed it from 12 weeks of progressions to 17. So last season, they didn't raise it. Uh, I heard due to the expansion teams. So this season, I, I, I just, they've got to raise it a little bit. I'm guessing probably 25 or 30. Gives everybody, you know, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little here and there. So I'm th- I'm thinking probably 30, no more than 30. And I do have one question, a more fun question, uh, considering we have Switch here and you, we just spoke to King. Who do you think is uh, the best QB option right now in the minors to go pro? Oh, the best QB option? Probably nothing personal against nobody, but the best QB option would probably be Slider because he's been in there longer. But Here's the, here's the other side of it. I don't see Slider in the chat. I don't see him being active. Um, Thumper, Jackson, those guys are always in there, always interacting, always active. You know, they come in, they're like, hey, what's up? You know, so I I would probably, let's see. uh Mm, okay. I look at the builds and I'm like, okay, we'll see. They're still young. They're still progressing. They're still putting it all together. But right off the top, it's attitude at this point. You can build a player. You can continue to progress the player. But if they got a crap attitude and they're just like, you know, hey, I'm going to get 100 sacks, you know, forget everybody else. I really want that guy on my team, you know? So, and that's where the GMs come in and they have to go do their homework. They got to go in and say, Hey, you know, what do you got? You know, what do you want to put towards this team? You know, it's like, that's, that's about it. I mean, it just depends on what the GM or the team is looking for at that time. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank you for that answer. That's that's very insightful. I'm curious, Switch. Do you have a question for Doug or a, a, an outstanding question? My question would be, how? What would you tell the younger guys in the SFLM? Would be the best way to like, if they want to progress all the way to like maybe a, a coaching position or a head coaching position. I'm doing something. Um, <laughs> um, immediately reach out to the to the minor league coaches. Um, I think King mentioned it before. There was, uh, I think he was talking about type attack. Type attack was Tacoma. Well, I think he was Tacoma, and then he went to Albuquerque. Well, he signed on with Atlanta to, I think he's a scout or he's, he's learning scouting or something like that. So if you're able to say you don't get drafted. Bro, I'm about to let you in. Say you don't get drafted this round and try to hook on with a team. They can teach you the scouting. They can teach you all of that stuff. 
it just depends on how much you want to learn and how much you want to put into it. Yeah. And, and um, there's, there's that layers, layers of, or, or steps that, that sort of get you, you there, right. Um, scouting is like, I feel is, is that first step. Um, and it takes some time to get, get uh, practice at it too and get, get good at recognizing the plays, but uh, like recognizing the plays comes with the benefit of all of a sudden you can, uh, start to see and an out scheme better because you can see how the plays will roll out or, or fall out on, on the field. And then, you know, then that can move into other opportunities. Right. So I got a, I got a funny yeah, story for you. I wasn't trying to <clears throat> fuck you over. I apologize. Uh, what was that? We'll pop him on mute quick. <laughs> there we go. Oh. All right. <laughs> So I got a funny story for you. So I know somebody that's in the league and Axel has met her at the convention. Before she joined the SFL, she knew nothing of football, nothing. She wouldn't watch it. She wouldn't pay attention, nothing. Now, when we watch games, she is like, why are they running gun straight at zero fifty four flash? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> she's yelling at the TV. That's not what I would have ran. And I don't know. And she's been in the league less than three hundred and sixty five days. Mm-hmm. You know, she's put the time in. She comes over. She loads it up. She looks at it. She studies it. She's got charts and graphs and Excel and whiteboard and she's just like you know she's putting the work in Mm -hmm. you know and the the minor league guys if you want to put the work in and you're here for the long haul and you want to you know you want to succeed and get to get to the point of you know seeing your name during a game at the bottom on the ticker that says you know this team has just named this person head coach or, you know, whatever. If that's where you want to go, you got to put in the work. And it all starts in the minors. Start learning the playbook. Start talking to your coaches in the minors, you know, because a lot of the coaches in the minors are players in the SFL. And they're on a team and they could say, hey, owner, there's this guy. Let's get him. Yep. You know, and so. being being a coach in the minors um, is that secondary step too, um, in coaching, right? So start off with being a scout. Then from scout, you move into SFLM coaching. You're cutting your teeth a little bit, better understanding, um, you know, how to fill out a, a playbook. You know, uh, what are the rules around which plays can and can't be used, and you know, uh, min and maximum of plays and percentages of run versus pass and all the things that go into that. And then also game planning itself, understanding how the plays work and being able to um, see them on the field and, and how they play out and things. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm well, still learning that too. too is, <laughs> but the other thing too, is we talk about scouting and we talk about playbooks and stuff like that. But um the other thing, too, that we've got a couple of guys, um, and if you're in Gen Chat, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I'm hoping Brett is on here. Is Brett on here today? Let's give Brett a shout out. I think he's from <laughs> Hong Kong. He jumps in the chat. He's always in there, and now I think he's director of communications in Canton, or, or where did he go? I think it's Canton, yeah. Yeah. So he's, you know, he's going to be the social media guy. He's going to, you know, he wants to learn stats and that stuff. But social media is big now. Get on Twitter. That's how you get your team out there. You know, Mm -hmm. you get get all that stuff. And it's like you have to say, hey, I want to learn this stuff. You know, some of you guys have seen, you know, the queen will post a graphic or something like that. She just learned all that stuff too. She's helping the team any way she can. And there's, 
there's players that have been in the league long, you know, for a while that some owners may be like, Hey, you know, uh, I got this person who wants to do this. You're just on the team, not really putting in the effort. You just come in for dress and that's it. Who do you keep? Mm -hmm. And doing things like, like TJ Harper last week, uh, had his uh, flex squad. So again, he, he put together, oh, yeah. you know, a group of people that were voting on different, mm-hmm. you know, the top players. And that's not something he had, to, he had to do. That's something he oh, out no. of his own, own volition, you know, wanted to do to give back to the community. And that's all that it really is, is giving it back, whether that's to the larger community or the community of your team, your, your minor league team, yeah. a, a, a pro team will see that and maybe want to bring you into their locker room, which is their community to help provide that, uh, kind of thing too and it's just really you know where's your interest where do you have some expertise or or want to learn and you know find somebody who maybe does that already and learn a little bit from them or do some googling and try to search out you know what are some tools that they use to do graphics or what's a free way to do that and and yeah. start experimenting i remember one of the early things that i would do, was doing was making simple like game um visuals for for tacoma versus whatever we were playing you know, just like, oh, Friday's game, be there, you know, and, and just having like a picture of like a, a bear attacking a, a, you know, a lynx or something like that. And you know, just having fun with it and just sort of, you know, mm-hmm. diving, diving in, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's just so much. And you, you come in, you can have a player like Brad. Brad doesn't have a player. He just wants to be a part of the, of the league. And mm-hmm. he stepped in, he came in, he's, you know, making the contacts. He's like, hey, put me in. No, well, let me show you what I can do. Mm-hmm. So the opportunities are out there. Daniel, you do you have any questions for Doug? Oh, geez. Yeah, here we go. Uh, no, no, we'll, we'll keep it mostly for that. We, we st- we're still planning on going to the uh, convention. Don't really worry, Game Banks are still trying to do that for this season. Oh, yeah. I know you missed us last time. Uh, you know we're gonna have a Twinkie. We're gonna have to have a Twinkie bed. I, I think we're gonna have to have a fight. I'm gonna have to have waffles on my side. You're gonna have Twinkies. We're just gonna flick them at each other. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> that works. Uh, <laughs> so I just want to let people know. Uh... Okay, I just want to let people know. Uh, since <laughs> this is a very big thing now, since we're already halfway through the minor league season. And the pros have been scouting for a while now, I'm sure, picking up who they want for their draft boards. You guys got the number one pick. I'm not going to ask you to suggest any names or nothing, but you guys have already looked for and figured out what you want as your number one position. I just want you guys to talk about that a bit more so people understand uh, how quickly they need to talk to the owners, talk to GMs, get their name out there. Um, as soon as, really, kind of as soon as you get into the league, you should be you know, advertising yourself, putting yourself out there. Um, and the biggest thing about the draft, here's the, here's, here's the biggest thing about the draft that I have learned. In the other league, no fun league, <laughs> they have the opportunity or they have the space to have three running backs, two quarterbacks, you know, multiple – multiple positions, multiple players at one position. But with this league, it's not really the best value gets drafted first. And that's something that the minor league guys have to understand. Because, you know, I've been hearing them like, oh, this guy's going to go first. Well, maybe, maybe not. There was one season, not one running back got picked. Not one quarterback got picked. You know, it just, it's what the team needs. And at this point, I'm not really sure how much I can divulge. Um, what do you think, Ethan? I see you in there. I see he posted done in <laughs> in chat. I don't know what that means, but, uh, but yeah, it's... It, having- yeah, I'm I'm kind of having like I I don't think we're going to draft. I'll just say that. 
So again, it, like you said, it's it's based on on need. And if a team doesn't have a need, they forfeit their need to draft, goes to the next person. So I think that might be then Indy. So then we would look at Indy. What is their need? It looks like they might have a running back need, or maybe they'll be getting that through free agency. We still don't know. That's still, you know, uh, the timeline for things to pay it for minor leaguers to pay attention to is, I think it's the 22nd is the start for re-signing period. That's when t- uh, players on the team can start to resign with their same team. And then those that don't just don't resign during that period. Then I believe it's a week later that then free agency t- uh, time uh, signing happens that then that's when these uh these members that have not signed with the team that they were previously on that season can go and sign with a new team and then at at that point that things start to pay uh play out to see who has these needs which 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 positions are not filled and those are the ones that we'll start to then see oh these are the 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 needs that might be hitting in that first round second round of draft and you just got to pay attention. Cool. Doug, any other uh, comments, any other thing, any tips that, that you think minor leaguers might need to know um, heading into the final um, half? Just stay positive, you know, hang in there. There's, like I said, there's, there's going to be some teams that don't draft. And there's going to be a lot of minor league guys that don't get drafted. Um, you just have to pay attention to free agents, the re-signings. Um, there's already, like you said, Indy's probably looking for a running back. More than likely, they will get that through free agency. Once the re-signing start, once the free agency starts, just pay attention to which teams may need what. You know, keep yourself keep yourself active. Mm-hmm. Um, get out there and just say, "Hey, you know." Um, one of the guys that I see a lot is uh, I think his name's Robert Brady. He's always in he's always in SFL chat, just like, "Yo, I'm gonna be the best." You know, keep it up. You know, keep it up, TJ. You know, it's just there's a lot of guys that I wish I could draft. I mean, I wish I could just, you know, like that one, that one, that one, <laughs> you know, but <clears throat> it just doesn't work out that way. You know, mm-hmm. so, but just stay positive, stay, you know, have fun with it. It's going to be a great off season. A lot of, you know, as usual, as you guys know, there's a lot of movement. This guy's going here. He's going here. Um, I've been working on, on, Daniel to come to Seattle for forever. You know, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, no, we're not supposed to d- divulge that information. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and that's just it. It's like, and what really, what really got me was because I joined as a GM so late, you know, there was no more Twinkie. There's, there's hardly any Twinkies on the shelf. <laughs> so I got to go to the back of the store you know, dig around in the back and be like, well, who's left? What are we looking for? You know, so. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's going to be fun. It's going to be, an, it's going to be an awesome season 20. Um, It's going to, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. That's all I can say. And, you know, like I said, uh, in about a week and a half, the whole lead up, there's going to be a lot of activity that you're going to start to see that, that week before Thanksgiving um, and, and then just continue and continue and continue. That's going to be this, this big energy ramp up. So right now, if you haven't already done it yesterday or a week ago, start reaching out now, uh, making those connections, making those networks, being, being proactive in chat and, mm-hmm. and things. So, um, yeah, thank you, Doug, for coming on. I really appreciate it, uh, coming in and, and you're always welcome to come on if you, if in the future. So I uh, really appreciate you coming on. Not a problem. All right. Have a good night. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to go uh, then to our the rest of our show. The What we traditionally do, we're going to look at last week's games and talk a little bit about them and start to uh, analyze what, we would be, uh, what will be uh, the games coming up tomorrow 
Uh, that's right. They're coming up tomorrow already. So this last week, this Friday night, um, we saw, <coughs> excuse me, game one. Uh, we saw Lincoln heading uh, down to Lexington uh, to take on uh, the the Miners. And this one, I know, I know, Daniel. Last year was your big thing. I, I like, I literally, I wonder if your curse continued, <laughs> continued for this year, this season. Um, how did this game play out? Uh, what, what are your thoughts on this game? Well, uh, this game was uh, not as just, close as it looked. To be honestly, uh, time of possession was twenty six fifty to seventeen forty five. A whole nine minutes almost. Uh, offensively, Lexington doubled, almost doubled their total yards. Right now, we're having another struggle with uh, Kenny Slider again. Really having any struggles in this one. Uh, but uh, Logan Lee turned out to have been all right, 15 for 81. So he's coming along nicely like we thought he would now that he's getting some stats under him. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this is tough, right? Lincoln's in the hole now. And as we know, every game gets closer and closer to the playoffs. The, uh, teams get tighter and tighter together. Lincoln might be losing steam, and they really need to start picking up towards the end. Yeah, so Robert, I know you're you're game planning against Lexington right now. I'm sure you've watched this game probably too much for too more too much than you needed to. But um, curious on what your thoughts are on, on how this played out. Uh, I thought it was a good game. Uh, Lexington did pull away. Um, Got to watch out for for that offense. Like they were able to piece it together and and get the ball rolling. Cool. Uh, Switch, were you able to uh, watch this game, uh, the Lincoln Lexington game, by chance? I uh, I don't think I watch it live, but I I always make sure to get every game in before awesome. every week. What did you see uh, in this game? In this game, honestly, I I, I thought the Rattlesnakes were, were going to win. I thought Lincoln was going to win, mm-hmm. but Lexington they did their thing, man. You yeah. know, on on every every side of the ball, you know, and the, Lincoln started this game with a kick return, I believe. Right for a touchdown, and I was like, "Oh, oh man, this, this game's about to get wild." Yeah, I expected Lincoln to be on top, but you know, both teams played a great game. It always can go anyway. Lexington came out with this one. You know, big mm-hmm. shout out to them. And let me, uh, we'll jump directly to you, uh, switch with game number two, Madison at San Jose. Tell us a little bit about about how this game went out. Uh, you know, from the on the field perspective, even. Uh, you know, I think we, we played our game, you know, and some things don't go your way. It happens, mm-hmm. but as long as we play our game like that, it's always going to be a close game and we're always going to have a chance to win. And as like Michael Brown gets better and all that, we're going to be able to run the ball and you know, the, the progression of the game will change, but big shout out to San Jose. Cause Jay Z bacon, uh, he, he, you know, he sealed it for them and big shout out to their quarterback is a uh, oh my god it's slipping my mind right now uh blanco uh, yeah blanco, blanco, yep. blanco played insane i and you know I, I can say he he played a better game than i did and he led his team to to a win and I, i'd love to see them in the playoffs mm-hmm. yeah robert what was your take on on how the madison game played out uh in san jose again i Blanco did did play really well. I saw some nice uh, air underneath the balls and and things for him. Yeah, uh, Blanco played amazing. I was really surprised. I honestly did not expect it. Uh, I could actually pull up the stats right here. Uh, here we go. Yeah, he... He did amazing. I mean, Switch, you did amazing as well, but he almost had 300 yards, uh, only got sacked once, three passing TDs, uh, very efficient, 78% completion. Like, he did amazing, Austin Blanco. Mm-hmm. And Daniel, uh, what are what are some of the, the, the tail of the tape kind of thing for Madison uh, at, at San Jose? What really is the tail of tape on this one is that both quarterbacks were pretty flawless in the execution on offense because uh, Switch also had 70% completion percentage. Uh, the big thing that took away, and I think Switch alluded to it a little bit, Michael Brown's still new in the running back position. He'll get his progressions. He'll learn. Uh, J.C. Bacon is a veteran at this point. He We know what we're getting from him every single week. I think that's really what the tail of the tape was in this one because 
Defenses, they did their part, but no interceptions, no turnovers. So it really was just on the back of the running game, I think, that really was that little extra that did it. Mm -hmm. So now we go to game number three, Ottawa at Tacoma. Robert, tell us a little bit about how this game played out for in your eyes out there. Well, of course, the end result was disappointing. Uh, I think it came down to a play or two that I wish we had done differently that I think would have changed the game by far. Uh, but overall, it's it's a loss. We had to eat it, and we're moving on to the next game. Mm -hmm. Switch, were you able to watch the the Ottawa game? I did. I did. Awesome. I, I made sure to watch this game. Shout out to my guy, King. Congratulations on the win. <laughs> um. Man, this was a sloppy game on you know in the rain. It, it was downpouring, and it came down to who could, who could really run that rock, you know. And JV, he he did it through an injury. He went for two hundred yards on the ground, and I mean they 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 played a great game with the conditions that they were given. And big shout out to Ottawa. Like this was not a blowout. This was a close game through mm -hmm. and through. So I think both teams did best with what they were given in that game. Uh, J.B. Elliott was probably the X factor for uh, the win for Tacoma, Tacoma. Any other standouts for you, Daniel, on in this game? Well, I'm going to give Ottawa a little bit of love, even though I'm Tacoma <laughs> born and bred and all that. Uh, Dwayne Salmon had a good game too, uh, 30 for 89 rush yards. That's not the nothing sneeze. At least three yards per carry, which is, you know, as we know, pretty good for a running back in the minor leagues. Uh, but this one this one was definitely sloppy, as uh, Switch was saying. Uh, I think King and John Lakeman had about – so King Jackson has 60% completion. John Lakeman has 67 So they weren't, like, throwing high percentage throws all the time. But it is, was in the rain, so you guys got to rely on the running back. And really, JBL, Mr. High Step himself, is good to see him get there, <laughs> even through an injury. Yeah, yeah. And now, Daniel – so I wasn't unable to watch. I, I was fully immersed in the, in the Ottawa Tacoma game. I was not able to watch the Annapolis Albuquerque game. Tell me a little bit about how this game, I see the, the zero 34. Tell me more about that. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you a bit more about the fact that no one wanted to call this a blow up, but this guy here last <laughs> week. So put that on the board right there. Curse be gone. Woo. But, uh, <laughs> Navigators struggled on offense. I'm going to tell you right now, they only had 195 total yards for the entire game. 144 to them by Gene Struthers, 23 of 30, pretty good, but he had two interceptions and three sacks. So um, the Navigators are really not doing it on the offensive side of the ball. And it's as soon as Gene lost all his weapons, it looked like he came back down to earth this season. So I'm hoping they try something new, maybe try something different to get him going. Because this one, this one was, uh, this one was hard to watch in the second half, especially. Yeah. Do you think uh, if you were Annapolis, Robert, what were some of the were there any highlights, anything that you could grab to learn from in in this game? Uh, I would have to say, uh, I didn't get a chance to watch the entirety of the game. I saw towards the end where it was pretty much a blowout, like. Mm -hmm. uh, it was hard to climb out of that hole once they were in it. Uh, find a way to get Chris Grant Jr. going. Uh, he did have 21 yards for 51. Uh, I'm sorry, 21 carries for 51 yards. Uh, they have to find a way to utilize him better. Um, they gave him seven catches, but for only 13 yards. So in that part of the offensive game plan, they have to utilize him better. and possibly get them to go downfield more gotcha and switch did you do you have any thoughts on how the annapolis albuquerque game played out um i think it you know a large part of this uh this score is possibly the the just the team overalls you know and annapolis is a really young team who i think we're going to start seeing them really pick it up in the second half of the season. And you know what Albuquerque is going to bring week in, week out. Yeah. Ty Patek is one of the best quarterbacks in this league. He's a, he's a vet. You know, he holds records. You know, this is what you expect from him. So, uh, you know, I think Annapolis, if they keep at it, you know, they keep progressing, they're going to be a good team. They're going to be formidable, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. The second half of the season, I think we're going to see a shift for them. 
And I think, uh, you know, Albuquerque is going to keep doing their thing. Big win for them this week. And a big shout out to Ty. Had a great game. That brings up what I wanted to come to next is we are literally at that halfway point. Um, so this courtesy of, of Joshua Williams um, and, and the great work that he does for the SFLM uh, Twitter. Um, he posted this uh, record, uh, current state records out there. Um, you know, we've got the big tie up at the top, you know, at three and one San Jose, Madison, Albuquerque, all sort of vying and fighting for that, that number one spot. They've got four more weeks to really put in the works. Is there one that might go four and oh, you know, to finish out? Could it be that Annapolis goes four and oh, to finish out, you know, at, at 500? Um, and then we've got the middle of the pack, you know, two and two, you know, some up, some downs, uh, you know, Tacoma on the two, two win uh, streak right now. On the you know Ottawa on the other side, Robert, <laughs> you got the, the you the two losses, but but you know it's it's anybody's game really. You know if you think about it, uh, you're doing up, the man dirty. Actually, you're doing the man dirty. I I, <laughs> I didn't mean anything negative by it. Uh, um, yeah, so it's it's really you know now's the time to kick it into high gear, right? Um, and and you know what's been working. Uh, going back and looking at your games, and and uh, you've got. Um, there's one more game out there that, that you would be playing that you guys should be playing the same opponent. Um, I think it's that week, same week one as week eight, perhaps. Um, but it should be good. It's, it should be a, a fun remainder of, of, of the season, um, for us. So that gets into oh, hide that one. Nope. Hide it. There we go. Um, into the games that are coming up tomorrow. So tomorrow, game one, we see San Jose uh, is heading south to Albuquerque. Uh, Daniel, what are your thoughts on how this game might play out? Uh, just one second. I'm going to call for Eddie Gage. Uh, Daniel to Arizona confirmed. Uh, we'll talk about that, Eddie. We'll talk about that a little later. Oh, well, well what are you saying? San Jose and Albuquerque. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the funny thing about this week, especially, is the top teams are playing against each other, and everyone that's 2-2 two and two is pretty much playing against each other, except for Tacoma. Who's playing the three one mass links? It's all the tight teams are playing against each other. This one, I'm gonna say this one is gonna be a uh, game of the week. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Nicholas himself would love to hear this. Uh, this is gonna really determine who gets that step up in the division or step up, I should say, near the top of the ladder. This one will be a good game. Uh, Adams have been really showing themselves that they can get their defense together, at least the offense. Ty is really starting to come around into position, and so is Josh Slap. Like, Slap has been really good. I think he had 120-something yards last week. Like, he's had two good games now of running the ball. So I think this one is going to be a, definitely a good one, and it could go either way, honestly. Mm-hmm. Robert, your, your take on how this might play out? Uh, I think it'll be a good game, but I think this is the game where we see the flight come back down to earth. Uh, they had a good run, a good three-game win streak, but I think Albuquerque will uh, beat them, and in a strong fashion, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Switch, did you have any uh, thoughts on how this game might play out? You know, you know, I'm looking at the teams, and they they both look like they they match up really well, honestly. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it's going to come down to the quarterback play, and Blanco played great last week. But if Ty can go out there, throw 300, and Slap can even keep it close on the ground against a Jay-Z, I, I think Albuquerque can, can take it. But it's going to be a really close game. It can go either way. Mm-hmm. But for now, I'd say the Adams are probably going to win this one. Yeah, it's. I mean, looking at what the Adams did last week with 34 points being put up there uh, and hold Annapolis to, to a goose egg. And then San Jose on the opposite side, too. Uh, in reading the chat here, Greg Soto talked about they're taking – they're opening up the playbook a little bit more uh, and, and we're able to put up 24 against Madison, which, you know, is not an easy task to do. Um, and so, I mean, I think both of these teams are – you know, rolling downhill right now with a lot of mo- uh, momentum behind them. And if anything, this this might be, a, 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 you know, saying it early, we've got three more games to go through, but this might easily be the, a game of the week of one you might not want to miss uh, so far. Um, again, I, right now, I, I, sorry, Nicholas, Bone, I, I think Adams might pull it out, but this is going to be a fun game to watch, definitely. Um, so... All right. Uh, 
we'll move on to game number two of the week uh, tomorrow night. Uh, it's Tagoma at Madison in Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, we see King Jackson versus Switch Thumper. Well, this is, you know, something that I think uh, for those that have been following the SFLM chat, uh, some of the back and forth that they've been, you know, having fun doing uh, in the chat there. Uh, this has been, this is, I think this will be a really fun game to watch uh, to see how they, how, how they ball out out there on the field. Um, Daniel, what are your thoughts on how this game might play out? I'm going to be rooting for Tacoma, but this is a hard matchup for Matt, uh, for Tacoma, I think. I think Madison is a very good team. They've shown how good they've been with Switch and how they've been uh, meticulous with their thrown ability of where to place the ball, where it goes, the completion percentage, and just getting like Ron Haynes or tight end, which has been one of their best weapons this entire season going. So uh, I think this is a hard matchup for Tacoma. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is If Tacoma wins this, I say they're in pretty good position to make a playoff berth. But I mean, this this three and one match is tough. I I'm leaning towards the Lynx's way, but no, my heart is always with the coma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Robert, your thoughts on how this game might play might play out? Uh, the way I see it is, T- Tacoma's on a, a winning high right now. They've won, I believe, two in a row. Mm-hmm. And uh, Madison received their first loss, so it's all about coaching. It's all about what Percoco can do rebounding from his first loss this season and in that in that i think tacoma could find a way to win i think uh percoco might not have it figured out no not nothing against percoco but i i just think i just have this feeling tacoma is going to come out with this win uh coming down to coaching coming down to the play calling i think Mm. And switch. What is your thoughts on how this game might play out? Well, I mean, I'm going to come in here with a little bias. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. But, yep. uh, you know, I, I think it's going to be a really close game. Uh, and I, I, I think both me and King are going to play a great game. I really think it's going to come down to the defenses. Uh, I think whichever defense really steps up, steps to the plate, can get the most turnovers. I think that'll be the team that takes it away and you know i i believe wholeheartedly in our defense so uh, i'm gonna go with madison like i said earlier i think you guys may have heard me 27 24 is my prediction for this one cool yeah i i like that you brought up the defenses there too it it, you know as as active and how uh sometimes um uh I, i don't want to say op but both both offenses can move the ball pretty well. Um, I'd say Tacoma might have a little bit more, uh, might have a few more mistakes under their belt in the first uh, four games than Madison does uh, on offense. But I, I think it depends on which defense is coming out to to stop the other's offense. That might be really which one, and it could be a game of throw 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 interception, turn the ball over. Now it's going the up op- up opposite way, throw 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 turn the ball over. So it might be a, it could be an interesting, fun defensive, you know, who's whoever has the ball last might be the one that, that wins this one. All right. We move on to number three, game number three. We see Lexington uh, heading North of the border uh, to Ottawa uh, to take on the cavalry. We'll start with you, Robert. What are you, what are you thinking and how this game might play out? And again, no need, not digging, trying to get the game plan or anything, but. Uh, I do come in with a little bias also, but <laughs> I, I do believe this is a make or break game for both teams to stay in the hunt and it'll come, to, come down to the wire. I think, I mean, uh, Lexington, uh, Lexington did an amazing job against Lincoln and we're able to pull, pull away. Uh, Ottawa is on a two game skid, uh, losing skid and, uh, they have to write the ship and, It'll come down to, I think, what I personally can do with this offense and what they can do defensively. I, I believe Ottawa's defense, they're short up. They're, they're, they're doing great. It's what I can do on the offense to beat Lexington. I think mm-hmm. that's what will come down to it. And Daniel, your thoughts on this game? Uh, this – this could be a coin flip for all I know. I know Lexington has really good coach and Robert has been doing a great job in Ottawa. 
But I'm wondering and curious if the two-way players will now start to bite the Ottawa team uh, because we're getting to the point where all the other progressions of the people that can still progress are starting to make their way, starting to get in there, starting to make their plays. And I, I wonder if this is the tipping point where Ottawa starts to start to lose a little bit because of their two-way players. Because they got a whole bunch on the front line, on the wide receivers and their tight ends, on the offensive line. Mm-hmm. And Switch, your, your thoughts on this game? You know, I, I keep hearing the two previous games that we just uh, talked about being called Games of the Week. But I really think this is my dark horse for Game of the Week. I think that these two teams are even better than their records show. And they're going to go off on each other. Like, this is going to be a dogfight through and through. I think from the beginning of the game all the way until the end, this is going to be a close game. And we're going to get to see two really good quarterbacks just go at it. And Mm -hmm. honestly, I can't wait to watch this one. I I don't know who's going to win. Yeah, it's a coin flip. Yeah, it's a coin flip. And I love that you brought up, like, being a dogfight. And I feel like... Both of these teams sitting at two and two, knowing that they're you know there's they're already halfway through the season and they this is the the moment to put up or shut up kind of thing that this is you know it's you know all hands on deck you know leaving everything out on the field and I, I get I I agree with you that's that this is the feel for this game coming into here definitely um, yeah I I think uh, Dwayne Samus is going to have a, a good night I think. Uh, uh, Robert's been getting a, a, a good read on, on getting him going. Um, and, and it might be, you know, Chad Moore's been showing it yet. He's, he's able to do what he needs to do out there, much like he was performing last season as well. Um, even early on. Um, so this, this will be a fun game. Um, so we'll, I'm, I'm excited to see how that, how it plays out. Um, and then finally, we've got uh, game number four. We see Lincoln uh, at Annapolis could this be Daniel? Could this be Annapolis's first win uh, tomorrow night? It very well could be because uh, Lincoln, uh, they have all the tools and they don't know how to use them. It feels like uh, they finally got Logan Lee going, right? He's finally doing his running game, but Kenny Slider still got some kinks to work out. Really got to figure out how to protect the ball from turnovers. I think Navigators have a very good shot to win this one. I'm not even. Joke, and I said last week was going to be a blowout because I didn't have any faith in Navigators. Navigators, I keep saying Navigators' defense is uh, what they uh, they lost what they used to be. They lost who they were. But this is a good zone for Navigators to start to get the win, start to get back in the hunt. And really, Lincoln needs this win more than the Navigators do. If Lincoln loses this, they lose a lot in the race for playoffs. Because a lot of other teams have already bet the Navigators. And everybody thinking this is going to be a win for Lincoln. So if Navigators can actually surprise them and pull the upset, because right now this is an upset because it's 0-4 versus 1-3, and uh, they really put Lincoln on the back foot of even getting into the playoff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Annapolis on a uh, being 0-4 are on a four-game losing streak. Lincoln won only their first week. And are since and then on a three game losing streak. So one of these teams are going to be going, are going to be really excited to break that streak. Um, yeah. Robert, what are, what are your thoughts on, on, you know, these two teams in this game? I think it comes down to the quarterback play between Slider and Struthers. Um, it's for me, it's a toss up in a good way. I think it'll be a battle. I think it'll be a dog fight. Like, like what we were talking about the previous game. But I think this will be a dogfight uh, because no one wants to be last. They're going to be fighting even harder to to avoid taking this out this week. Yeah, nothing left to lose, right? <laughs> like go yep. down, go go down swinging if you need to. Yeah, switch. What are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, no, I I completely agree, and I, I'm kind of with Daniel, man. I I want to see a Navigators first win. Uh, it, it's very hard to call it at this point. Honestly, we'll we'll see how well. And Annapolis can stop uh, the run game of Lincoln. I think that's what it may come down to because both these quarterbacks, we know what they can do. They they have the overall. They they have the uh, the experience. It's going to come down to who whose defense can stop the other's run game. Who can hold them to to third and longs, third and mediums. You know, mm-hmm. I think that's what it'll come down to. And you know, I, personally, I'm I'm always rooting for the underdogs. Mm-hmm. Always rooting <laughs> for the Rocky Balboas of the world. So yeah. 
we uh, might I see, see that happen. We might see a, a big game from from Gino McFly. You know, if if there was a a a a person or a group of people, again, it's it's that that uh, the D line for for the Navigators and that those linebacker crew. And they've got three di- three D line and three linebackers, so six in that front. What seven um, to oh. be taking on? Uh, so I think I'm that could be. Place, I didn't want to bother you. You're good. You're good. Hold one second. Um, yeah, I, th- I think Annapolis has, has the personnel out there to stop Logan Lee. So again, it falls on Kenny Slider's shoulders, um, uh, to, to see, uh, <laughs> if he can do it, but, uh, so you will see that that's, again, that's all coming up, uh, tomorrow night, um, on SFL, uh, YouTube. So that sort of wraps up, uh, our, our analysis of, of last week and, and this week, uh, Daniel, any final thoughts on, on how, how things might go so far uh, for the next, for tomorrow night or the rest of the season? Well, I think tomorrow night, especially we'll have a clearer picture of who's taken the hunt into playoff. Cause like I said, we had three, three uh, different games have game of the week on our panel. This is how good of a week this is. This is how <laughs> good, <laughs> this might be the best week we have. And to have it tomorrow instead of Friday, it's just, it's just a treat, right? It's just a yeah. little treat to add to our uh, dining experience. Uh, tune into all the games because they're all going to be bangers. They're all going to be great. And we'll see, uh, we'll see who survives, for lack of a better term. We'll see who survives this week to get to a better streak next week to get one step closer to the playoff picture. Yeah, it's starting to get fun. It's, it is. Uh, Robert, any final words for you? Uh, one thing we forgot to do is uh, have a player of the week or player of the game. Yeah, we I, didn't. I'll, I'll say my player of the week out of all the games, player of the week, type attack. I think he will ball out and it'll be big numbers. Gotcha. We'll go back to Daniel. Do you have a player who you, out of all four games, do you have one that you think is going to stand out? You want me to curse someone. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. That is exactly <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Uh, So we're... A lot of us here are room for a navigator's win. So, Gene Struthers, you're going to be my player of the week. Gotcha. And then, Switch, any final words? And uh, who do you think might be a, a player of the week? Uh, You know, I'm going to go with the player of the week. And just because just I always got my teammates' backs, I think it's going to be Ron Haynes. I think Ron's going to end up having a big game. Whether we win or lose, I think he's going to have a big game. Um. And final thoughts, I think, yeah, as Daniel said, this is this is probably the best week we got up until now, without a doubt. This is big playoff implications for everyone, whether it be seeding or just getting in. You know, this is going to come down to who wants it more at the end of the day, who wants to be in the, the playoffs and who wants to be that first seed. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be it's going to be fireworks. Yeah, be things, fireworks tomorrow, things are getting really real uh, out there. You know, I, I with King, what King Jackson was talking about, you know, not really expecting, you know, seeing your player out on the field and, and feeling that that level of interest and investment in this little digital character out on the field. But, you know, every week it's growing and growing. And now you're like, yep, th- I am fully in it. I we we are going to make that championship push kind of feel. Um, I'd love to hear it. Love to see it. Uh, so yeah, those of you that are are playing uh, minor league players that are tuned in both live and uh, on the recording, get out there tonight, uh, tomorrow, I, and you know um, now's a great time to have the fun camaraderie, but a little bit of a, a competition going on in the SFLM Gen Chat. Who do you think is you know who's going to be uh, your your nemesis for lack of a you know taking on on Ethan and Doug's t- team name? Who's your nemesis on the other team that you're going to be going against? Um, that you're like, I'm, I'm coming for you, uh, kind of thing. Um, so anyways, with that, uh, I'm excited for games tomorrow night. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, thank you all for joining us on this Wednesday night for Money League Fights and Insights. Thank you, Daniel, for joining Robert, for joining and switch for joining. Uh, thank you for, uh, to Doug for, for coming on and talking with us for a bit. And thank you for, uh, to, uh, King Jackson for coming on as well. Uh, so, and those in the chat, thank you so much. And with that, that, that does it. That wraps up our show. So with that, have a good, uh, Wednesday night, everyone. 
Have a good one. And remember, waffles are better than Twinkies. <laughs> Have a good night. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.